In this tutorial, we will go over the test drive section of the Titan software. The Titan software is a universal software that works with all Titan products, including the Titan SVX, Titan Nexus, Titan Core, and Titan IMX series. For this demonstration, we have a Titan Nexus SCX unit configured and tuned to work with a NEMA 17 size stepper motor with a 24 volt DC power supply. From the Titan software, click the test drive button. On the top left corner, you will see the network ID of the Titan unit. You can search for other ID on the network by clicking on the ID button. This will search the ID from 1 to 12. You can select which Titan unit you want to communicate with by selecting the corresponding ID from the list box. The File Save button will save the last 600 sets of encoder position, target position, position error, target velocity, actual velocity, and motor current values to a CSV file. In the top left box, you can see the target position, actual encoder position, second encoder position, position error value along with the bias angle, if enabled, target speed, actual speed, motor current, and the motor voltage. Note that the second encoder is not available and not enabled on the Nexus, shown by the X. You can set the current encoder position by double-clicking on the actual position value. A dialog window will show, and you can enter the new position value. We will set the current position as 1200. You will see that the actual position and the target position are now set to 1200. With the servo off, you can rotate the shaft and see the position values change. You will also see the velocity values change. Note that the velocity value is calculated from the rate of change from the encoder value. For stepper motors, if bias angle compensation is enabled, the bias angle value will show next to the position error in parentheses. With bias angle compensation and monitoring enabled, the motor will be able to move at an optimal torque performance, especially in high speed. Also, bias angle monitoring is used to detect any encoder drifts that may occur when you have noise on the encoder lines. Note that if the bias angle goes above 60 degrees, the motor will go into a fault. The box next to the motion status is the general status box. Here you will be able to see the LED and RGB status as well as the analog input. Power supply voltage and current use and temperature and power used. You can click on the LED or the RGB boxes to toggle the light. You can double-click on the analog input value, and the value will change the unit from a raw 12-bit value to a 3.3 volt to 5 volt range value. The box below is the digital input and output status box. When the digital input is triggered on, the status will turn red or green. When it's off, it will turn to gray. The digital output shows as blue when on and gray when off. Note that the digital input and output may show the opposite of the actual circuit, depending on whether the circuit is normally on or off. Go to the motion state box located on the mid-top area. In this box, you can see if the motor is enabled or disabled, in position, and moving or not. Below is the motor home state. This box will be checked after performing the homing routine successfully. The gear button will open the setup dialog box to set the in-position range and in-motion factor. The in-position range is an encoder count value. With the servo on, the in-position status will be on when the actual position is within the range of the target position. The in-motion factor is used for setting the minimum speed to determine if the motor is moving or not. For a typical motor encoder resolution, use the default value of 1. For an ultra-high resolution encoder such as nano-resolution encoders, this value should be increased. The fault status on the top indicates if the motor is in a fault state. When in a fault state, the color of the indicator will turn red. Double-click on the fault indicator and you will see the type of fault in the text box. If the log button is checked, the last 600 data will be automatically saved to a file when fault occurs while the test drive is open. The location of the log file is in the public Titan SVX fault logs directory. Click the view log button to see the last 50 events from the startup. You can click the refresh button to refresh the log list. The log list can be saved to a file. The log can be cleared and reset. The log list can also be stored in internal flash memory. The user-defined log can be entered with the log code value from 2 to 100. Note that code 1 is reserved as the startup and any log above 100 is reserved. 
Below the log add button is the gauge box, which has the total time and the total time in motion since power on. These gauge values are reset at power up and start at zero value. Below the gauges are the power on and in motion odometer values. At power up, these values are read from the flash. Before powering down, perform the flash save so that these values are stored in the flash memory for the values to continue from the next power up. The reset button can be used to reset the odometer values. Exit out of the log window. On the right side of the motion state box, there are four error checkboxes. First is the hardware limit enable checkbox. Next is the soft limit check enable checkbox. The third is the position error check enable checkbox. And last is the current error check enable checkbox. Click the setup button next to the error check enable checkboxes to open the setup window for setting the values and the durations for the position error and the current error. Here you can also set the soft limit values. Note that these values are also available in the configuration setting window. Let's close the error condition set window. Below the DIO box, there are four buttons and an open loop hold selection value. The first button is the servo on button. This will enable the motor and control the motor. Next is the servo off button. This will disable the motor and turn off the servo control of the motor. The next button is the clear button. If the motor is in a fault state, the clear button will clear the fault. The next button is the reset button. The reset button will reset the servo on the initial phase angle value. This reset applies to stepper servo motor control and brushless servo motor control without the hall sensors where the initial phase angle is determined with a slight movement of the motor at servo on. Once the initial phase angle is determined at servo on, this value remains in memory until the fault or with reset. Once fault occurs or reset is performed at servo on, the initial phase angle find motion will be performed. The open loop hold selection list applies only to the stepper servo control. When an open loop hold is selected other than disable, the stepper motor goes into open loop mode in idle or when not in motion. When the motor is in motion, it goes to servo control mode and when not moving, the stepper motor goes into open loop constant current mode. Now let's go to the motion control section. At the top, there are two profile options to select. One is the trapezoidal profile, and the other is the S-curve profile selection. The jerk value for the S-curve profile can also be set. Below the profile selection, there are two sets of target position, speed, acceleration, and deceleration values. The decel checkbox is available to enable separate acceleration and deceleration values. If this decel checkbox is not set, acceleration and deceleration will be the same value. There are two buttons, go to position 1 and go to position two, which are available to test the moves between the two positions. Below the target position moves, there are two velocity mode tabs. First is the servo velocity tab. In this tab window, you can perform constant speed jog and home motions. There are speed, acceleration and deceleration values that are used in the constant speed velocity motion. For homing, various mode settings are available to use when performing the homing. The checkbox next to the home button is the position and velocity servo control checkbox. When this is enabled in velocity mode, both the position and velocity control is done. If this checkbox is not set, then only the velocity control is done. Select the voltage velocity tab. On the voltage velocity control, the velocity is controlled with voltage control. Click the enable voltage velocity checkbox. The zero button is to set the voltage value to zero. You can use the slider or the actual target velocity to set the voltage value. Increase increment value sets how fast the velocity is changed. The smaller the value, the slower the voltage change, and the quicker the response. The go button is used to go to the manually entered value. Below the velocity control is the gain control checkbox. When this box is checked, the gain control window will open. From the gain control window, you can set the position and velocity and current control gains, as well as various filters and other settings. This is the end of part 1 of the test drive tutorial. For part 2, please click the box above. For more information, feel free to contact our support team. Thank you and happy servoing!